JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 9th. I am Haralam Pisuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It lost the most ground versus SEC, CHF, NZD and JPY in that order, while it decked out some gains only against uh, the British pound. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, NOC. Now, the relative strength of the safe havens CHF and JPY suggests that markets may have traded in a risk-off fashion. However, the strengthening of the risk-linked Kiwi and the weakening of the US dollar point otherwise. So, with the performance in the FX world painting a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU and US indices traded in the green with, with the S&P 500 hitting a fresh all-time high. The exception, the only exception was uh, Italy's food CMIB which slid 0.66%. Investors' appetite softened again during the Asian session today with China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KEOSPI losing 1.13, 1.34 and 0.33% respectively, despite Japan's Nikkei rising 0.27%. Now, EU and US uh, shares may have continued to gain due to the FOMC minutes uh, revealing on Wednesday that a rise in inflation in the months to come is likely to prove to be temporary and that it is too early to start discussing monetary policy normalization. That view was repeated by Fed Chair Jerome Powell yesterday when he spoke at uh, an IMF event. However, market optimism faded relatively quickly with uh, most major a Asian stock indices pulling back. This confirms our view that uh, market participants remain willing to increase their risk exposure, but they are also reluctant to, to drastically do so ahead of uh, next week's uh, earnings report. Yesterday, we also got the minutes from the latest ECB meeting. In contrast uh, with our expectations, the minutes revealed that there was a broad consensus on the, on the underlying on the understanding that the total uh, uh, purchase uh, the, the total uh, PEP envelope was not called into question in the current conditions, and that the pace of the purchases could be reduced in the future. Given that at the meeting they accelerated those purchases due to the unwarranted rise in bond yields, we've been expecting the Council to stay willing to do more if deemed uh, necessary. Judging by the Euro's reaction to trade higher, it seems that uh, other participants uh, may, have, may have had the same opinion with us. So, with ACB now talking about tapering, we would expect the euro to continue strengthening for a while more, especially against the US dollar, which we expect to continue to weaken due to the Fed, uh, due to a Fed not willing to discuss tapering at the moment, and perhaps against the safe haven again, which we expect to underperform due to a further due to further improvement in the broader market sentiment. Now, as for today, the main event on the economic agenda may be Canada's employment report for March. The unemployment rate is expected to have declined to 8% from 8.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast, to show, is forecast to show that the economy has added 100,000 jobs following a 259.2 thousand gain in February. 
after such a strong jobs uh, growth in February, a slowdown in March appears more than normal to us and thus we would consider this a decent report. When they last met, Bank of Canada officials kept the monetary policy unchanged and noted that the economic recovery continues to require extraordinary monetary policy support until economic slag is absorbed so that the 2% inflation goal is sustainably achieved. According to the bank's January projections, this is not expected to happen until into 2023. However, they reiterated that uh, as they continue to gain confidence in the strength of the recovery, the pace of net purchases of Government of Canada bonds will be adjusted as required. Something that may have kept the door for a quantitative easing tapering open. So with that in mind, a decent employment report may keep that option on the table and thereby support the Canadian dollar. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, uh, besides the Canadian employment report for March, we also have the US PPIs uh, for the same month. Uh, the headline rate is forecast to have risen to 3.8% year over year from 2.8%, while the core one is, um, is anticipated to have inched up to 2.7% year over year from 2.5%. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.